Welcome to Season 2, Episode 14 of the Traditional Legends Show. I'm Brandy, and I am here with John at Rainy Boxwood House in Romney, West Virginia. But. Yes. It's almost 50 degrees outside. This so is true. I'm cool with that. In this beautiful spring-like weather in January, <laughs> let's talk about some legends. Yeah, definitely. Let's go with the North Carolinians here. North Quackalacky. North Ooh, Quackalacky. We're getting back into my stomping grounds. All right. So here's the thing with me. Mm-hmm. I refer to North Carolina and South Carolina collectively as the Carolinas. Yep, yep. You know, I I lived in Myrtle Beach for a good number of years, and it is literally right there on the border, the coastal border with North Carolina. So heading up there, going into um, some of the areas that we may be talking about here soon, it it was 30 minutes away. 30 minutes. Yeah. I'm there. Definitely. Yeah, I'm in North Carolina. So I just collectively refer to it as... The Carolinas. the Carolinas, yeah, and then you you have you have a lot of really cool history down there. Oh, I st- like amazing history. The, what's really funny, and and we talked about this before, the further south you get, mm-hmm. the more myths, legends, and mysteries you have. Well, let's let's break down the state. All right, you have you have <laughs> the the mountains. Yep. You have the mountains of the Blue Ridge. Correct. Okay. Then you work your way into the center there. You have just level, mm-hmm. you know, rolling hills. Mm-hmm. And then you get into the the, the, the shore, coast, the coastline. Right, the coastal area. Yeah. And the thing is, even the coastal area starts going into what's termed the low country. Yep. Of South Carolina. Yep. You know, which if you, if you look at a map, um, you have a little point and you have a little point. Up here is right about Wilmington. Down here yep. is uh, just about Charleston. And in this curve between the points, you have the entire coast going further down, which exactly, actually exactly. explains why hurricanes typically don't hit within the Myrtle Beach area. Yeah, definitely. And um, so let's let's talk about the spooky. All right. Well, we're talking about, you know, those three different parts, those three different right, plots. Right, right. So let's talk about the Brown Mountain Lights. Let's start with Mount. You know, I I heard about the Brown Mountain Lights. What that was one of the first things I learned about when I moved to the Carolinas. I never really heard about mm-hmm. them. I started hearing about them towards the turn of the century, probably like two thousands, going okay, into gotcha. you know two thousand tens. Well, like I that. mean, I can't say anything. I learned about it in the nineties. You know, as soon as people learned that I liked the spooky stuff. It was, oh, have you heard about the Brown Mountain Lights? Have you heard about them? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Brown Mountain Lights are out in Burke County near Mm -hmm. Asheville. It's about 60, 70 miles northeast Mm -hmm. of Asheville. Correct. Um, Several locations have reported them within the mountains. Mm -hmm. It it is, I'd say, people, this is one of the most gorgeous, like, land locations in the United States. Well... Well, it is in the breathtaking Pisgah National Forest. Ah, it yes, yes, yes. It is in the center of that. And I have, I got some theories, but we'll get into that here. And it was also featured in mm-hmm. X-Files in 1999. Correct. Correct. Um, now, first and foremost, um, Burke County, it's a little bit north of Asheville, North yeah. Carolina. Yep. Um, which is where Biltmore Estates is, yep. the home of the Vanderbilts. Within Carolinas, I know specifically, it was the first house with electricity. Okay. Running okay. water. Thing. Um, hello, the Vanderbilts. Oh, yeah. They, they, oh, had, yeah. they had the cash to be able to do this. You know, so keep, keep that in mind. Okay, we're dealing with um, the late 1800s. You know, mid to late 1800s, you know. Now, some say that these lights have been reported going back to the Cherokee and oh, yeah. Catawbas. Yeah, some of the earliest reports are from the Cherokee and Catawba right. Indians and Civil War soldiers back in the eighteen you know 1860s. Right, exactly. But now there are others who are saying, oh... These lights, people are just being cray-cray. They read Jules Verne's novel 
Um, okay. Master of the World, you know, where he talks about airships. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And some report that the first reported sighting was in 1912. Okay. Mm-hmm. So apparently this this fellow went out there. He was a scientist. He went out there with all his little instruments and stuff and proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was lights from trains and electricity and automobiles. Okay. Possibility. But on the other hand, it's also reported the U S government has conducted three separate investigations, Mm -hmm. um, including private groups outside of U S jurisdiction, so to speak. Yep. Um, students at Appalachian University that they have frequently conducted research and nothing. Well, I just uh, I just saw a uh, snippet on uh, on a show about mm-hmm. Appalachian State University and a yeah. astronomy professor doing mm-hmm. uh, research out there and uh, caught really cool footage right. of you know that. So you know, but. You know, looking back at that, okay, possibly the electricity, you know, some popping, flashing in the lights, and you got you got those uh, old boys out there in the moonshine sector of the United States okay. going, what in the hell is that light going on there? Because they, you know, right, they, this right. is brand new. This is late 1800s. Correct. Nobody knew anything except for candlelight. Well, and for, they got for these, the most part, yes. And you got yes. these these electrical balls popping off. Now, and and I think it's worth noting also, there was a um, mystery airship craze in 1896 to 1897 yeah. that swept across the United States because Flate, the Wright Brothers. The Wright Brothers, yeah. Okay. Now, mind you, planes at that time didn't have the blinky lights in the back. Nope. Nope. And I know when I first heard about it, um, one of the most popular theories was it's swamp gas. <laughs> and listen, <Yeah. laughs> listen, if y'all have ever lived down in the rural South, like I have, I grew up in the swamps of Florida. You know, I live, yeah, people see Myrtle Beach as like the tourist destination. But <laughs> here's the thing. You go a few miles out and you're in the swamps. You are in the swamps yep. of the Carolinas. And everybody knows, honey, that is not swamp gas. <laughs> it's not. It's just not. Might be swamp ass, but not swamp <laughs> exactly. gas. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know what is hot hey, down y'all. there. I'm just saying. Uh, but, so, Yeah. yeah. The, the, but um, <laughs> these these lights, they're they're incredible. They could be varied from slow movements around mm-hmm. to uh, like fireworks in nature. And mm-hmm. what was cool about the one the astronomy professor that that pointed out is uh, in his in his um, in his footage, there it, it's it's faster than normal um, uh, the normal shutter speed, shutter rate of the camera. Okay, okay, gotcha. So normally a shooting star or a or a meteorite, right. it would have that trail behind it, that, okay. that dot trip, but this yeah. didn't have it. Interesting, interesting. Now, I, I, I got to say it. So um, a couple weeks ago when we were investigating Maryland, mm-hmm. we talked about uh, former President Teddy Roosevelt. He was a believer in cryptids like Bigfoot, the Snollygaster, things like that. Okay. Teddy Roosevelt is also the president who uh, began the uh, wildlife protection. He's the one that. Oh, I see where you're going with this. Yeah, you. I see where you're going with this. You got me. You got me. Yep. So he's the one that created the state forests. Well, one of the more modern theories is that these state forests were created in order to protect cryptids and other such aliens. So let's let's take this step further. Let's let's open up let's open up our audience's minds and 
What do you think? They might be fairies. They might be willows and wisps. Right. And and I have, I, personally, I have seen them. Now, from my vantage point, what I did witness was actually closer to the ground. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it was in uh, like a, a meadow type area. In or the, like little. Maybe even portal location. Now that I, I could definitely buy. And this is something we actually did cover during one of our former podcasts talking about aliens and fairies. Yep. How. Hold on one second. Let me reorganize my thoughts here because I have like <laughs> a bunch of different things. Like, <laughs> my Rolodex just went. <laughs> um, so prior to and historians and scholars typically say world war ii prior to world war ii you have reports of fairies yep. and things like that okay well ufologists put forth that after world war ii you have an increased sighting of ufos and aliens yeah ufologists say that the early fairies were Aliens, Possible aliens, okay. aliens, yep. Fairyologist, it's a thing, look it up. They claim that what we're seeing now as UFOs and aliens are actually fairies. So let's take it a step further. Um, you know, Sasquatch, uh, you know, those, those, uh, those beings that are able to translucent mm -hmm themselves and right. and you know run around so we got that we got the the number of other sightings of you know mm -hmm. different um different creatures that we've we've already talked about right exactly you know so exactly. the snallygaster snallygaster might the be a thing it might be you know some something interdimensional yeah, inter you know, interdimensional we, um it was actually the snallygaster here's a funny thing um, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Snallygaster was actually featured in this movie, but it was, um, I believe, the Occam. Okay. That, that's what it was called. Yep. You know, and it, right here, I do want to say this. One of the main reasons we don't really cover Sasquatch when we're talking about different states, in doing research, there are two creatures that are everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Lake monsters. Yep. And Sasquatch. Exactly. Exactly. Literally. I think, uh, yeah. I think there would be another form of um, in between a, a primate and a human. You right. have that. You have that 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 fine line there. And I think mm -hmm. that they're just so few and far between. You know, you don't really mm -hmm. see them too much, but some people do. Exactly. You know? And, you know, I, I think maybe when we get to the pacific northwest we might bring up sasquatch but otherwise we're not really talking about it because he's everywhere yeah he's and, literally and folks, every state and, and every state just to tell you you know this may sound kooky and eerie and spooky and and all mm -hmm. weird and stuff like that like oh my god john brain you're <laughs> freaking nuts <laughs> but let me tell you we what are? after after what i've seen personally mm -hmm. you know I could be condemned into an insane asylum <laughs> or what I've seen in my experiences. Everything makes sense. Everything makes everything sense. Everything makes sense. Yeah. Well, you know, if you want to see the, the Brown mountain lights, um, one of the most notable vantage points is Wiseman's view. Mm -hmm. Oh know? yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. But of course, so let's, let's talk about, uh, Let's go even a step further we're, since we're talking about, you know, portals and locations and everything like that. Stuff. Lost Colony of Roanoke. You knew we had to do it. What you the knew hell happened there? It's Yeah, it's... There's a lot of theories that have yet to be conclusively proven, but I do think we're close. Yeah, so August of 1587... Mm -hmm. This group of 115 settlers arrived on Roanoke Island, which is now today, what, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's off the coast of North, or North Carolina. Actually, actually, that's where our mystery story begins. Mm -hmm. But it was a couple of years before that, Sir Walter Raleigh yep. decided to have a colony, 1585, but 
their first year, they didn't have the resources. They didn't have food. And um, guess what? They didn't get along with the natives. Oh, that's a, so, that's a shocker. Yeah. <laughs> so they left a few men there to guard Raleigh's claim. And the rest of them tucked their tail between their legs and ran back to England. Of course. Okay. Yay. Mm-hmm. Good. Bye. Here I am saying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we're, we're direct descendants of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I'm also a descendant of um, the Catawba Indians. King yep. Agler or Nopkahoe. Oh my gosh, I really need to learn how to say that. Um, of the Catawba tribe. Surprise. So, anyway, uh, 1587. You know, back to 1587, 115 settlers landed. Uh, later that year, they decided that the governor, John White, mm-hmm. um, would sail back to England in order to gather, you know, fresh supplies. Resources. Yeah. And I, I get it. Okay. I do get it. Because here's the thing. You're coming from England. Mm-hmm. Completely different geography. You are going to the coast of the Carolinas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. You're, you're going from the English... Right. Rainy nuts season two to March. sandy, yeah, sandy soil that's yep. very difficult to grow in. Yep, you heat. are yep. the heat, the mosquitoes. You are going to have more scrub brush oh, than yeah. you are strong um, oak trees, for example. Mm-hmm. So, and on top of that, you have natives that are like what are you doing in my neighborhood? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Just saying. I'm just saying. You know, so I I do understand why he was like, okay, I'm going to go back. I further understand why only he went back and he left everyone else there. He's like, okay, look, you have supplies. You're good. Well, yeah, because you're sailing across the Atlantic and you're you're doing it in a a boat. You don't know what's going to happen. Which... If, you, if you're taking the lesser of two evils, yeah, you know, it's better just to send one person yeah. than try to get everybody back over there. Yep. So anyway, he goes to England and he makes this peti- petition to get more resources, m- more manpower. But it takes him three years. He ends up stuck there for three years. Yeah. I, that's I insane. Just, I can't fathom that. Yeah, that's amazing. And, that's and, you that's know, so crazy. No duh. You know, when he gets back, nobody's there because it's been three years. That's three life cycles. Three years. He comes back and it's gone. Yeah. And and gone. this is talking like everything is gone. Well, you're talking three life cycles. Even after yeah. the first life cycle of, of a year, you know, mm-hmm. they if they can't find anywhere to farm or if they're having right. trouble, right. where are they going to go? They can That's either the mystery. exactly exactly Where are they so gonna go so when he gets back nobody's there and mm-hmm. apart from a single word carved into the wood mm-hmm. Croatoan Croatoan and apparently onto the trees on the colony's borders mm-hmm. C R O was carved now one it made him assume that they went to the Croatoan natives. Yeah. But here's what happened. They couldn't launch a search party because the weather was bad. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, being from the area, I'm just going to go with the assumption it could have been a nor'easter. It could have been a tropical storm. Mm-hmm. It could have been a hurricane. Well, it was whatever August. Whatever the reason. Or no. It was, yeah, August. Oh, yeah. It was probably a tropical storm or hurricane. Oh, yeah. Hello. Without a doubt. So what happened, instead of searching for the people, they went back to England. We'll come back later and look for them. Yeah, we'll come back later. It'll be fine. It's like, wow, really? Yeah. So they, but they assumed that the inhabitants of the colony went to Croatoan Island, which is now Hatteras. Mm -hmm. Cape Hatteras, yep. Cape Hatteras. And I mean, if, if anyone pays any attention to hurricane season... Dude, y'all yep. on the Outer Banks, Hatteras, mm-hmm. man, y'all get hammered. I kid you not, actually, one hurricane season, the hurricane came up, hit the Outer Banks, went out into the ocean, and then spun came around. around for a while, re-strengthened, and came right back at it. I remember seeing that, yep. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. 
Well, archaeologists up to this point, I mean, there, there's there been rumors. Yeah, there's been a lot of rumors There have going been on. rumors, but archaeologists up to this point have not found definitive proof. So there's, there's three different aspects to this. Mm-hmm. There's uh they died from natural causes or you know hurricane disease starvation okay that that's a gimme that could be a possibility where's three the bodies? years three years yep and there was the bodies okay were they attacked by either Native Americans or right. or the right. Spanish okay okay I'll give you that I'll give you that you know, because, the Spanish you know, they were known to this is true we you know, are, ask the Mayans we are still going through um. At that point in time, piracy. Yep. And things yep. like that. Or could they have left Roanoke voluntarily and went to another location? Correct. Maybe they did integrate. Yeah. You know, there there are rumors of blonde hair, blue eyed natives. Yeah. So there there is there is some DNA research right now being conducted going out Correct. there doing all that stuff. So maybe maybe Correct. something might pop up. There so. is genetic research going on there's archaeological research um and uh but mind you the thing is i i have been on an archaeological dig and um just getting into the 1700s yeah Yeah. i i was in a pit that was over my head yeah so if you're right so if you're dealing with especially with a marsh yeah that's hard that's hard. you know you're in a swamp area Mm -hmm. And you're digging through these different strata layers. Mm -hmm. And as you're digging, you're literally digging through time. So you've got to be able to reach these levels. You've got to be able to look at the artifacts within situ in order to understand the context of what was happening at the time, what was happening right there specifically. Yep. So it, it's a very long and tedious process. And one of the things that archaeologists, archaeologists love to do, they get in there, they find their cool thing, they clean it up. <laughs> and then they put it into a dresser. And then they put it on a shelf. <laughs> put it in a drawer. <laughs> you know, it's like grandma's knickknacks. <laughs> you know, they put it on a shelf and then nobody looks at it again. But here's, here's, here's my issue. And if y'all are listening... I am a historian. I have done archaeologists, archaeology. I believe historians and archaeologists need to work together. Mm-hmm. Send your stuff to a historian. Get them on site with you so that these things can be processed properly. Exactly. You gotta work together. Yeah, and then um, so let's get to another speaking portion. Of, yeah, speaking of speaking of Roanoke and the areas and everything like that. Pirates. Pirates. Arr. So, you know, North Carolina synonymous with Blackbeard. Blackbeard, yep. yes. Um, we've been Make out some there. great coffee. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Blackbeard's Delight by uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company. Yep. There's a plug for you guys. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's really cool. We've mm-hmm. uh, we've been out there to Bath, yeah. Bath, North we, Carolina. We've been to Bath. I yep. have been to um, Southport, which I was just talking about. Myrtle Beach, it's right there next to Calabash. But mm-hmm. between Calabash and Wilmington is the little tiny village of Southport. And that is where the gentleman pirate, Steed Bonnet, yep, yep, hailed from or made his little home. So right there along the North Carolina coast, the Cape Fear River, things like that. Oh, yes. So the... Uh Ocracoke, Ocracoke, Ocracoke Island. Um, there's a small channel of water known as Teach's Hole, and that's where Blackbeard hung out. Mm-hmm. Uh, this inlet is reported to be a spot of where you know where he he hung out as well as anchored his ships. But this is where today there are some ghostly sightings and hauntings of Blackbeard, possibly. Or one of Blackbeard's men or pirates in general hang out. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. You know, if you don't know who Blackbeard is, Blackbeard was a man by the name of Edward Teach. And uh, he's most notably remembered as this fearsome pirate 
who would put the wicks for cannons yep. Yep. in his mustache and like psychological them. warfare yeah. you know it, that's exactly it because a lot of these people that he approached they just went all right you well, win. he, you he win. also had a uh, he also had six shooters right like yeah six. he he had them yeah. all in there but here's the thing too uh blackbeard had he was suffering the ill of <laughs> The ill effects, well, not the (laughs) mental effects of syphilis. Oh, yeah. Pretty much going, pretty much uh, taking a sexually transmitted disease and getting into your brain. What's funny, it's like Steed Bonnet was considered the gentleman pirate, Mm -hmm. but Blackbeard had all the booty. Had all the booty. (laughs) Had all the booty. Well, that's that's because. That's because that's because he was like he was a bad man, a yeah, bad child. But, but the women loved him, hence yep. why he uh, had syphilis. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, but again, Steed Bonnet, he didn't. He didn't steal his own ship. He bought his own ship. Hmm. He had good manners. He was the gentleman pirate. Um, so. He actually, in um, September of 1718, here we go back in the fall, Mm -hmm. he led a band of pirates in a battle against a fleet of merchant ships off the coast of Southport, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Um, Okay. So the ships, they're heavily armed. They had cannons, sailors. I mean, it was bloody. It was really fierce. It was really bloody. And I mean, this fighting went on for hours. Wow. Wow. Bonnet lost. To a merchant fleet. To a merchant fleet. Man. Um, there was, it, the, it is called the bloodiest pirate encounter in North Carolina history. Wow. It also marked the end of Bonnet's career. He was arrested just outside of Southport and taken to Charleston, South Carolina and hanged. So let's, let's talk about that then. You know, you got, you got cannon fire. You got incredibly... Oh, yeah. Incredibly screeching screams, you know. Imagine so, what you would be hearing. So you can hear right at the coast, probably. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, exactly. it's it's incredible. So there there have been there's been yes. stories of cries and moans and and lights. You know, you got you flashing got lights off lights, the yeah, yeah flashing well, lights. Well, I mean, the Carolinas. It was lawless it was lawless Mm -hmm. it was in the early years so they didn't have law there i mean good grief they barely have law there now along the coast (laughs) all right so uh so yeah so we there was a really lot a lot of cool stuff going on Mm -hmm. there got a lot of haunting activity uh you know movement lights sounds even even uh the the roanoke island has has reports of a uh, spirit of a mm-hmm. uh, uh, Virginia Dare, which was you know John White's John uh, White's well, his granddaughter I or his daughter. Granddaughter. Yeah, yeah. And fun fact, and I I didn't delve into this um, too much, but apparently there are mermaids in the Cape Fear River. Wow, mermaids. Yeah. Well, it could be it could be possible, you know, because you have you know. Lake monster, squatch, everything like that. So exactly, that's I, exactly it. Phase me. You know, every state has some sort of Sasquatch legend. Every state has some sort of lake monster legend. So it doesn't surprise me, and especially being right there on the ocean, that the Cape Fear would have mermaid legends. All right. So next week we're gonna travel we're gonna be down. talking to South Kakalaki. Yep. Travel down Highway 17 straight into. South Carolina. Yeah. So as always, please remember to rate, review, and subscribe to or follow our podcast or VCast now on YouTube, Spotify, wherever we get our podcasts, vlogs, wherever you get it, all good. Just check us out. Exactly. And if you guys have anything, please comment on the uh, on the mm-hmm. posts in YouTube. Right. Uh, we've already had a few great uh, responses. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you so much for your support. And uh, as always, um, I'm John. And I'm Brandy. Have a great day. And uh, stay dry. Stay dry. Yeah, that's it. Work. <laughs>